And we are back, and we just finished watching 1993's The Piano, directed and written by Jane Campion. This movie came out in 1993, is rated R, and clocks in at two hours and one minute. We saw it on the Showtime app, but it is playing on other platforms, including, I don't know, uh, it says Hulu here, but we saw it on the Showtime app. Hulu makes you buy a additional thing for Showtime, which is weird. So just, yeah, it's just available on the Showtime app. That's it. It says Showtime with Prime video channels. We couldn't find it on Prime though, right? I thought we looked on Prime originally. You could, you can get Showtime through Prime. Okay. So Doesn't basically matter. you're paying extra. In addition to your Prime membership, you would have to pay extra for Showtime. So just, if you have Showtime, you can see the Just watch piano. it through there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So... This is the story of a woman named Ada who, I guess, originally spoke but then decided not to. And it's the 1800s and she has a young daughter and she has been put into an arranged marriage, um, I guess somewhere in New Zealand. After a, probably a really treacherous journey there, she meets her husband, played by Sam Neill, who seems like a middle class maybe landowner. He does well. He's, he, Although yeah. he lives in like that little hovel, I thought we would have lived somewhere nicer. But well, I mean, it's 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 the sort of like nowhere. pioneer days New Zealand. So there's yeah. not really much there. They're working with the natives. Uh, he's. It looks like he's trying to expand his land. Everything about the most important things for this man is land. Yes. Everything he does is a deal for land, and. I guess he's going to do something with it. That's not really relevant to the story. I don't right, imagine. right. But yeah, he, he wants land. Yes. And then enter George, played by Harvey Keitel, who I guess works with. I don't know if he works for. I think he's another guy who has land there, but he seems to be more. He knows the natives. Like he could actually speak Maori and. And, so. and he has the. Uh, he's got the 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 tattoos on, his, on face. his face. Yeah, so, so he's, he's definitely he's, accepted that lifestyle. Yeah, he's clearly been there, probably a bit, and and a, and basically acclimatized better than Sam Neill did. Sam Neill is still he, considered. He can't speak to any of these people. Yeah, and he needs George to, I guess, hire people and get stuff done and make deals. Yeah. Because yeah. he's, he's trying to buy land from these people, and they're like, these are where our ancestors are buried. And he's yeah. just like, what are they saying? Yeah. Uh, come on, 12 blankets. You'll and guns. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> what did you think? I mean, it's it's a lovely, I mean, beautiful-looking film. It's. I was with the story. I mean, the story carried me through the entire way, but i got to be honest, I don't know what the hell is going on. <sighs> this... This, I, this I, is the type of film that they'd make you watch in film school and explain <laughs> it to you. Again, everything is interpretation. This is through the female perspective. You have the character of Ada who's basically lived this life. And the only thing that brings her joy that speaks to her heart is that piano. To the uh -huh. point where she is devastated that it's left on the beach. Yeah. when she originally lands there to, I guess, start this new chapter of her life with her new husband through this arranged marriage. And I don't know if George sees that, but he makes a deal where he gets the piano and then Ada's husband basically says, well, you have to teach him how to play the piano. And through this teaching of George... I guess you could say that Ada finds a new passion because this this man rekindles something in her. We don't know too well, much about he, Flora's he dad. Never, he never wanted to learn to play the piano. No, he, no. He, he specifically, specifically did wanted that to because be with her. he wanted to be with her because he was, I mean, he's lonely. He's, he's uh, I, I don't know, I don't think he's interested in any, any of the, the Native women, even though there's definitely interest there on that part. That, yeah, yeah basically having round table discussions about his penis <laughs> <laughs> which he flashes that's harvey Keitel. Tell, yes there's, there's a at that point in time i remember because that was when i first went to college and he'd been in bed lieutenant and he'd been a bed lieutenant and or did that come out after i don't remember it was, there was like that film and there's something else and it was almost like 
okay, in Harry Keltel's contract, he has to have a scene where, he where, his, junk. where his cock is hanging out and he's going, <laughs> and he does both those things in this movie. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I think at the heart of this story, it's this woman finding her voice to learn to and at the end you kind of get to that where she says that her will like almost forced her to like fight for her own life while she's being dragged down into the water yeah i didn't quite that's another thing i didn't quite understand like the whole thing about her will it's like so she didn't like her like she was fighting against her will but it's her will i mean if you're fighting against your will that is your will in a, in a way, I think, so this is the 1800s. Mm -hmm. Women don't really have any kind of a choice. I mean, she didn't have a choice in this marriage. This was something that was yeah. arranged by well, her, her father. Her, her dad right? just said, hey, so, you're married. Yeah, you, I can't support, whatever the, whatever the reasons were, he just shipped her off without any, I mean, women weren't consulted in things like this. They just were married off, and that's what it was. So I think in that respect, she... What's that Thoreau quote about lives of quiet desperation? So she had that, but the only thing that truly, truly brought anything out of her was that piano, and she would just play it. And you could hear, like, even that scene where the other woman, where she said that she didn't like the way she played, because she played like a mood. It was like a mood that got into you. And she didn't like that. Yeah. So here was a woman with passion and ideas and thoughts and feelings. But they kind of had to be stifled. I mean, you live in a very puritanistical society from the way they dress to the way they behave to the way they act to the way they live in a way. And something about George brought out like this raw primal being to the forefront so that she wasn't living a life in quiet desperation. She was a, now an active participant. And I think that George treated her differently. And I think that that's ultimately what she corresponded with like she didn't do that with sam neil but i don't think the sam neil character even took the time to really understand her i think in his mind it was like well you're my wife and you have to do what i tell you to do there was yeah. no consideration for what she wanted or what she liked in the beginning of the movie when he's when they're going to the beach to meet them He's like, he tells, like, I guess George is his confidant. And he's like, I didn't think that she would be so tiny or little. And he's like, well, what do you think? And, and George looks at her and he goes, I think she's tired, which is kind of like, almost like a appropriate or just yeah, obviously George, that makes sense. She, George, she's been on this boat coming yeah. from wherever. No, I think here. George was, George was more, had a, a deeper sense of empathy than, than, uh, what was Sam Kingo's character? You know what? Did they ever say his name? Well, he he, he definitely had more of a sense of empathy and and that and and that's like evidence right there. Sam Neill's assessment is, oh, she's he's he, it's all about the physical. It's she's small. And Alistair uh, Stewart. It, maybe she's got mental damage too. Right, because he like mentions that. that. Yeah. Has she shown affection yet? It was everything was. It was like he had bought a a cow. Right. And that wasn't... it was like, why isn't this cow doing cow stuff? Right. Whereas uh, George, he's like, oh, she's tired. And then eventually when she shows up and she's like, bring me down and I want to I want to go to the piano. I mean, he sees her play it and he basically humors her for this whole thing. I mean, they didn't leave until evening. Right. They were there the whole they were, day. They were on the beach. She was just playing this piano all freaking day. And he just sat and listened and walked around and listened. And but I think he really listened. Like, he yeah. really understood where she was coming from. Yeah, and he realized, I mean, part of it was a, a selfish thing that, oh, if I get this piano, then I'll make some sort of arrangement where she has to come by my house every day or something right. like that. The other half of it was just, he could, I guess he could tell that she was... I guess you could tell she was sad. He, he was will. He was doing stuff for her, right? 
as opposed to expecting stuff from her. Right. And I mean, yeah, it was a, for the most part, it was a kind of an exploitative relationship. Relationship. I mean, he didn't, another thing that was interesting was he he didn't like go right out, right out for it. I mean, the deal was he had, she had to stay there. She had to basically do this for the, the number of black keys on the piano. Mm -hmm. And like the first few keys, it was basically just touching her shoulder or her hand or, Mm-hmm. looking at her leg or something. I don't know. Yeah. What and then eventually laying nude with him. Right. I mean, right. did they even have sex at that, at that point? I don't think so. No, but no, it was just laying naked with her. And then yeah. after that, he was like, you know what? I can't do this, do this anymore. anymore. Right. It's making, I forgot what it's, he said. It's he, making you a whore and it's, it's make, making me, uh, what was it? Just like tormented. Yeah. So he just gave her the piano. And right. that was the thing that was sort of interesting was once she had the piano, she just, Lost interest. Lost interest. In right. It. Yeah. By that point, I guess her feelings for George were different. Her, yeah. Because she didn't different. like him in the beginning. She thought he was a brute. He couldn't read. Yeah. Which was funny because I remember the first time I saw this movie. I saw this in the theater and I just, I loved it. I loved it. I just, I'd forgotten what a gorgeous, lush, beautiful film this is. And I always thought it was funny that she gifted him the key like the where she wrote that he had her heart because it's like but he doesn't read read. (laughs) so what was the point of giving him that i mean it was just evidence to her infidelity to her own husband which then alistair takes into his own hands that was a very alistair it's alistair yeah it's a very traumatic scene yeah and i the at that point, I, I began become. I mean, that was an, another source of confusion for me because, like, what the hell was going on with? He would be laying in bed, and she would just come to his bed and just start like rubbing his chest. Mm-hmm. Like, what the hell was going on there? Was I she think, trying to make this marriage work? I think. Or? I think in that. I again. I I never read like I guess the original novel that this is. I, is this based on? I don't even know. I don't know if it's a... I think it's an adapted screenplay. To me, it was that she needed to foster that relationship on her own terms, right? Mm -hmm. Because remember, at one point, he tries to touch her and she kind of recoils. So she wanted to set the tone for that relationship. I think that with her dealings with George, she was more confident maybe in her sexuality so she kind of wanted to be the aggressor there and i think that alistair just was like he just wanted to get laid i think at that point because he was frustrated because he was like you're my wife and this is like something that you're supposed to fulfill and i think that i think by that point maybe it she he was she was almost like an obsession to him right well, that was because how do you I, I, go to this guy's was, house and was, watch your wife make love to him? Yeah, he watched he watched yeah. Harvey Keitel fucking his wife. Yeah, and like like the whole thing from like beginning, he he like even like changed vantage points where he's like, okay, I, I can't really see that well. I'm gonna go underneath the floor now. Right. <clears throat> like like he was scoping that out. Yeah, you know, from every angle. <laughs> the only thing missing was him dressed as Superman. <laughs> like in Rick and Morty. But seriously, it was it was bizarre. And then afterwards, I mean he doesn't confront her about it or anything. He Not really, but then he says, You won't see Baines. Yeah. So it's almost like and he like he, he locks her in the house. house. Right. But then he takes the <clears throat> boards off because it's like, okay, I trust you because it seems like we're working on this marriage. But she ultimately by giving that key or telling the daughter Flora to give that key to George, she's basically tell- saying that she loves George, which that's the thing that put Alistair uh, over the edge. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, maybe it's it's too soap opery for me. I, I, possibly, I, I, possibly. I've, I mean, this I've is never definitely been into that, that sort of stuff. So this is definitely a woman's movie written and directed by a woman you could see that in every inch of this movie this is definitely that and i think that the 
I think Jane Campion did such a great job with this film. This is probably like my favorite movie of hers. I mean, I, we we recently saw Power of the Dog, but and I liked it, but I don't think I liked it as much as this movie. There's something like even now, like I watch it and I think it's still pretty. I probably could use like a a bit of a a cleanup maybe just to get the colors more brighter and, and sharper and crisper. But I think I it's think, still, I, I think the muted colors was part of it because yeah. it was like, uh, maybe we're spoiled with like what New Zealand looks like because we've seen <laughs> all the Lord of the Rings movies and pretty yes. much anything where they need like a thousand different environments. And it's always gorgeous. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And this was not gorgeous. This no. was, I think it was pretty. Every, I think everything was covered in mud and dirt. Even the trees were covered in mud and yeah. dirt. Like this was pioneer day yeah. sort of stuff. There was nothing lush. Or really, I I I don't know. Like I love the opening sequences uh, in the were beach. There, were there even any leaves on any of the trees? All I saw was like bark and like naked vines, just and mud and dirt and tons of mud. Yeah. So much mud. And the way they would get around, it was like oh, instead of Instead of a sidewalk or a road or, or even just planks or even just wood. like stones on the ground, it was just planks of wood. That would just sink yeah. anyway. It didn't even matter. It was yeah. like that, it was what was like, the point of that? What's the point? Yeah. And the I mean and even on the beach, when they were on the beach, it was everything was just grey. Yeah. It was just varying shades of grey. Like the water was upset and, and the sky was overcast. There was never sitting on sitting somewhere and the sunlight peeking through and green and you know colorful flowers or anything. None of that. This was gritty, dirty pioneer day. Well, it was New Zealand. I mean, in the defense of the story, I mean that's no, what no, it looked no, no, like. It, I mean, no, it no, wasn't. That, that, that's what I mean. That it wasn't it, sanitized. I, I think it, I think that that works for the film, and that's why I'm thinking. Oh well, you can't really give it a polish and brighten up the colors because that's that sets the mood you yeah, know? yeah it's like there's no joy here no 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 yeah and i think that also translates to this story because yeah, she yeah. didn't she wasn't you don't really see her happy until the end correct yeah so everything looks brighter and sunnier and, and happy. yes and there that last locale where they were that looked nice and bright right because opposed, i think her life the rest of the film where it was her just, life took a turn yeah. you know she, there's that scene where she falls into the water and it's like what a death right yeah i didn't i didn't that was another thing i just didn't quite get because she, she did that on purpose that's the thing we don't know was it on purpose i mean it seemed like it was but then at the same time well, she saw what was she saw what was happening, happening and, and she, she saw what foot. would happen if her foot was in the middle of those ropes so then she put her foot there right but it's interesting because as she's going through the down into the the bottom of the the water she's sort of just passive and then something in her you see yeah, that something. spark and that's where she fights to survive. Yeah. And that's what she was saying, that her will, her will to live, because now she had this man in her life that really spoke to her, that understood her, right? What would she want to live for her daughter? That's that, a good that, question. That's, that's, that's like another thing that kind of bothered me. It was, it was like, what about your kid? I mean, I understand your kid kind of betrayed you and got you mutilated <laughs> but still you, you have a daughter i don't i don't know there's i mean as a parent i agree with you that probably doesn't score points for her but i think at the same time looking at it as just someone who sort of ha had this half life right to suddenly find that other person that is your person that you know you can live with for the rest of your life and be dependent on and have them depend on you. I think that's I think that's ultimately part of what helped her fight for her well, life. And I'm sure was, the daughter was also a yeah. factor here. What was the piano symbolic of symbolic of the first the first love. 
Possibly. And basically her being with Baines was her finally getting over him. Because if you notice, there is one scene where she presses a key on the piano. And, and it says etched, A. Etched on the yeah. side of the key. Loves D. It says A loves D. Right. And then once she had gotten the piano back, it's sort of like, okay, well, I've moved on from this or I've gotten over this or whatever. Because you know, right. it's... The first and relation, she says, the first rela- like you don't the fa- really know the father much. of Anna Paquin is not in the you know, story. You, never, you, you don't know what his name it. is. They don't. They don't say. They don't even say in the, the, the narration. Oh, she was sort of like disgraced or damaged goods because back then a child out of wedlock was was that right? Was that uh, she just showed up and she had a kid and I don't know. There, there there's little bits and pieces you could analyze and think about that aren't really spelled out for you and and that's that's it to me that's interesting but like i said overall i i don't know it, it, this this wasn't for me okay fair enough fair enough i i disagree i think no, it's you a can't it's disagree a, with a film not being for me i'm, I'm not saying it was a bad no, no, movie no, no. i didn't say that either i'm just saying i disagree with with your opinion of it but that's fine because everything is interpretation right i myself adore this movie i've always loved this movie it's always spoken to me i think it's a beautiful piece of cinema i think it's really fantastic storytelling the acting in this is top notch i mean it really goes to show you i think anna paquin was nominated for a supporting actor that year academy award maybe she is delightful in this even when she's betraying her mother um (laughs) Holly Hunter is just luminescent. There's something about her that just, even though she's wearing like these just very drab clothes and she has like the stupid hairdo, there's something about her face that still is just lovely and beautiful and just amazing to look at. Uh, Harvey Keitel, he looks like he could put a hurt on you, right? I just... He's like this he, big. He looks like Harvey Keitel. He looks like Harvey Har- Keitel. Like, Har- I don't know. He's always looked. It's just his face. His face is just like a mug. <laughs> you know, he's always had that sort of brutish face. Yeah. Even when he was young, like you look at him in Taxi Driver, he, yeah. he still has that sort of like bizarre. Like, uh, not bizarre is a terrible word, but like tough looking face he doesn't he doesn't have he doesn't have like the the elegant nose no no his nose looks like it's taken some punches yeah he's still better to look at than walking phoenix when you see him just wearing normal clothes and whatever and he's cleaned up or whatever looks like hollywood actor guy but then takes off the shirt the ribs are popping out the shoulder the shoulder blades especially like he is like a master at manipulating it. I don't know what is going on there, but it's weird. How do we feel about Harvey Keitel nakedness? He just looks like a thick naked dude. And I, I, I got to be honest. And the thing that's like, he is just like, soup, he must be just super proud of his cock. <laughs> it, and it's like, not like it's like, wow, that's an impressive cock. <laughs> It's just like he just doesn't care. And good for him. Good, good for Harvey. He's just like check it out. And I'm, while you're looking at it, I'm gonna make this weird ass noise. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't do it both at the same time. time no, he, he, he reserved the noise for a later moment. Yes, yes. <laughs> Scale of one to ten, what would you, what would you give this film? You know what? I'm not going to say it's a bad movie. I'm just going to say it flew over my head. So I'll probably just give it a six. A six? Okay. I would give this movie an eight. I think it's beautiful to look at. I think the performances were lovely. I think everything felt like we were in 1800s New Zealand. It was nice to see Cliff Curtis as a young man. Young Maori. (laughs) <laughs> but that I think that was the big thing this movie is going to be 30 years old next year 1993 wow. so time has flown Anna Paquin does not look like that anymore 
Holly Hunter doesn't age, I don't think. Maybe a little bit, but she's still this little fabulous thing. Mm-hmm. Harvey's gotten older. Sam's gotten older. So it's almost sad or bittersweet to see that. But um, I think I still feel like this movie is strong and it holds up. And again, one of my favorite, probably my favorite Jane Campion movie. I think I like this better than Power of the Dog. What would you say? Uh, I understood Power of the Dog more than I understood this. So you like that one better? So, yeah, I would give that one a, a bit of a nod ahead. Also, Power of the Dog is prettier than this. Hmm. But the, like I said, the, 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 the color palette of this film lent itself well to this the story. Film, yeah. To this story. So, yeah, uh, that's not a mark against it. I'm just saying that the Power of the Dog had some better... I guess environments to 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 look at, hmm. but you know that's not you're not going to see a movie to see the the landscape. You're you're going to see a movie for a good story. Yeah. I I just found the power of the dog story easier to follow, and I guess the motivations of the characters a little bit more clear. Like I said, I I never quite understood the motivations or or the. Like why, uh, what, what was her name? Ada. Ada. Why Ada was doing the things she did, why she had the past that she did. Well, I think you're not supposed to know much about her. I mean, she gives you very brief summation in the beginning, right? Yeah. She doesn't even go into who Flora's father is. That's yeah. not relevant. All she tells no, you no, is I... that she stopped talking at five or six and that her father said it's because she had a strong will. And that the day she decides to stop breathing is going to be her last day. So that tells you something about her character. Yeah. I don't and know. then she's... It, it just it didn't work for me. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. I, 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 again, I would give this an eight. I, I think that if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. If you want to see really good storytelling from strong female directors, this is definitely a surefire hit definitely look for it and give it a chance and just enjoy it and that's it from us and we will bid you all a good night